There we go. All right. I think it's time for a Squire Mini Revisit. What? Yeah, it's time for a Squire Mini Revisit. We've been playing it a little bit in this morning. Megan's guitar. Same one as yours. Yeah. Yeah. Some sick kids at home. We've been entertaining ourselves by playing our guitars this morning. Okay, do it the way Daddy shot, showed you. Like, like us. There you go. Nice one. Now do this, Megan. Can you do that? Honestly, I've been nice one. Perfect. That's even better. Okay, grab your pick. Rock some more. Nice one. Woo! There's Daddy's trifecta. And there's a the Squire Mini. And I've been running the little Marshall. That's a surprisingly good little line. Yeah. Through my little extension cab. I've been running it through my little extension cab. My little Marshall. A little bitchin' little cab, actually. I just kind of slapped it together and then had some of this leftover stuff that's kind of peeling off. Here, get out of the way. Daddy's gonna have to edit that out of the video. Okay. So, since it's so impossible to make videos without kids hanging around, you're gonna have to put up with the fact that my kids are in this video. So, suck it! What? Suck it, those of you who were so offended last time my kids were in the video. They're sick. See, those are the snot rags. Anyway, yeah, it's a bitchin' little cab, 8 inch. I just slapped it together really, really, really quick, and then I had this stuff, and I wanted to kind of dress it up a little bit. And I might do some other stuff to it. I think I'll probably put a grill on it, but it sounds awesome. So, anyway, I just leave it the way it is. Who cares? And I did shoot some video about how I built that. Uh, that's one of my kind of half-built projects with a bit of video shot. Anyway, this guy, I wanted to turn my attention to this guy. I'm kind of hoping the kids will shut up for a minute so I can talk. All right, so I've been wanting to turn my attention back to this guy here. And uh, I've been paying so much attention to the trifecta over there that uh, with the kids, you can see the snot rags. There they are. Oh, they're so sick, all right. Anyway, let's go downstairs so we don't have to listen to the little monkeys. All right, let's go downstairs. And and kids, if you've got, if you haven't got kids, I'm telling you, they leave their shit everywhere. There's not a room in the house that isn't covered up by their crap. Fuck me. All right, that was a lot of jerking around to rig up a light back here. See what I'm dealing with. But anyway, uh, kind of want to turn my attention back to this at some point. Uh, I started this Christ. I don't know, sometime in the winter. It's been a few months. It was cold when I was trying to do this. I was trying to do a bit of work out in the garage. Had a lot of trouble getting this speaker mounted the way I wanted. But it all fits now. And uh, I really just have to, you know, do a little bit of wiring. But what I was hoping to do, because this, this isn't pretty bad, Nick. This, this case has seen better days, and it's not very much actual protection. So what I was hoping to do is line it with some new fabric. And it was supposed to be that stuff. But that's a bit... I don't know, this suede... Just wasn't exactly what I was looking for, so I didn't use it. And it's really friggin' hard to find orange velvet, holy crap. Like, talk about a, a rare species or something like that. They're just like, I can't find it at any fabric shop. It's such a nightmare. And I only need, like, about a meter of it. And I really would like to stay with that original color. But something tells me I'm going to have to make a compromise. So, anyway, for those of you who haven't seen this case, you should go back and have a quick peek at my other videos. Uh, this is a case I got for, like, 20 bucks. It's an original Fender Music Master. Uh, base, I think, case. It didn't have any of this junk in it, obviously. 
It was just empty. And uh, good old Davey got to show on like a purpose-built case that had an amp in it. I can't remember the manufacturer right now, but it was like an old-timey case. It was pretty thick, and the uh, amp was purpose-built around, I mean, rather, the case was purpose-built around the, the amp. Uh, that was just so bitchin', so I had the idea to try this, and then I ran across this case, and I had this old little practice amp that I ripped apart. Everything works, and it's gonna work, and the guitar's gonna fit. And like I said, if you haven't seen any of this, just go quickly back through my videos, and you need to just skim through them. Um, you'll see what I'm on about. But anyway, so that's half finished. Uh, come with me. I got another half finished project. Stop it! Oh, kids, you all stop it. Anyway, look at that shocker. Lovely, that, isn't it? This thing is a shocker. Have a look at this piece of crap. I mean, that is fucking shocking. Let me show you this thing. It's pretty. It has a trim bar, bolt on neck. It's like a strat copy. My mate won this thing, or I don't know if he won it or somebody he knows won it. Anyway, got it. I won it. Let's go have a look at it. I don't know, here in the light. Alright, so, I don't know if you can see, but I'm going to attempt to show you just how warped this neck is. Okay. Also, one of the things I find quite annoying is when guys are showing you how to set up guitars and they show you this sighting trick, nobody actually ever shows you what to look for. Because nobody ever films this properly. But anyway, you can see there on the E string, on the low E string, how it dips. How it goes from a low spot and then it, it goes up quite high at the end of it. And then if I come over here, you can see it's exactly the opposite. So let's see if I can get a bit more light on that. Let's see if I can see if you can see that. The shadow will tell all. You're just looking for the shadow of the string. Right? And you can see, like this neck is so warped, you can see it. It twists this way. So it's like, it's unsolved. You can't play it. You can't set this guitar up. And if you look down the other end of it, this is, an, this is another way to be able to have a quick look at it. But you can see, you can see just by looking at it. This one is really obvious. It dips significantly. It's twisted this way. Like the whole top of the neck is twisted. And you can tell just by looking at it. That's not not hard to tell that. See how low it is there? Anyway, so here's what we're gonna do with this shocker. <laughs> we're gonna strip all the ugly off it. We're gonna take all the parts out of it. I'm gonna ray I'm going to get rid of this trim bar and we'll just put a solid block of wood in there and then I'll just use reuse that and pull the uh, pull the back of the trim uh, off and just use the bridge and then I haven't even plugged this guitar in it's a bit puzzling it doesn't have any kind of switch so I think both humbuckers are just on all the time kind of like the middle position of a, of a Gibson but you got a volume and a tone. Like I said, I haven't even plugged this thing in. I ain't bothered. But this wiring is a bit of a mystery also. Anyway, like fuck you, look at this thing. It's like, it's not only twisted, but this, this neck was installed like crooked, like sideways. It's off to this side, it's tilted to this side. This whole fucking thing is just shocking. Look at, 
Look at how that... Look at... I'm just noticing that now. Look at how that... That backing plate is installed. It's totally crooked. Fuck, this was like... This was put together by... Like a blind, deaf, mute... I don't even know why they bothered. I expect that they... They figure you're just gonna hang the shit on the wall or something like that. But we're gonna turn it into a player. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn this bastard into a lap steel. So out comes the nut. That's gonna come up significantly. That probably is gonna need a shim of some sort. I don't know what I'm gonna do there. But uh, I need to get the, the action up quite a few mil at both ends. And then that's it. Might reshape the headstock. We're definitely getting rid of all this fucking Budweiser ugliness. Sorry for those of you who like this, but I just think that is shocking. <sighs> that's pretty shocking. I would not roll with that anywhere. That is not my speed. Anyway, um, so yeah, there's another project that is not even, well, I got one of the back plates off. I got the cover plate off. That's how far along I am with that. Alright. Uh, so just one more I wanted to show you. Uh, I already fear this video is going to be pretty long. But this is a bit of a surprise. I'm just going to show you this. I won't even talk about it. I had some interesting wood left. I think most of you can guess what I'm going to do here. This is all just junk I had laying around. Um... For those of you keen-eyed viewers, I think if you look quickly at this, you'll you'll work out what I'm what what I'm aiming to do with this little cat. So that's another one I've shot some video for, um, and uh, I think that's going to be really awesome. I think this is going to be super fun. It's going to be an interesting body style. I think again, those of you uh, who are keenly looking at this video right now. Uh, we'll see what body style I'm going to be going for. Because uh, I don't think I've ever seen a lap steel. Oh, I gave it away. Shit. Maybe I'll cut that out of the video. Maybe I won't. <laughs> I pulled a Dave. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop panning back and forth across it. I just thought that the uh, this wood is really awesome. I don't know what the hell it is. This was, honestly, this was hanging around in my garage. When we moved in here. In blocks like this. Like, just junk. Just fucking, I don't know what this is. It's really light, super porous, but it finishes really well. I had two big chunks of it, and I've used quite a lot of it for other stuff. Um, but it was just like logs, I think, somebody had split. So I've, I've, uh, I've gone ahead and planed down a few boards, uh, taken a few chunks, and, uh, gotten some usable pieces out of that. It's all rough right now, but look at that grain. Like, it kills me. Those of you woodworkers out there, like, because I'm also a woodworking guy, but those of you woodworker guys, like, out there that know about wood, I don't know an awful lot about wood. I mean, I am a hobby woodworker, but I've never really taken the time to get to know my species of wood. I, I can identify some common stuff, but this, I have no clue what the hell this is. Look at that green coloring. That's just gorgeous. I'm, I, like, I want to rip it down one more time just to get another sheet of veneer out of it. Just so, like, I feel, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't want to glue one beautiful side of this down and lose it, is I guess what I'm trying to say. But look at how gorgeous that is. I want to just, I think I'm going to try and, I think that's thick enough to get another two pieces out of. And then I'll have four, four pieces like that for a top. And I did find some other bits, but they're not as thick to make to give me my thickness. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about this. You all know what it is now. Um, but that's coming. I have a little bit of video, like I said, I took a little bit of video of where, how it took, you know, what I did to get to this point so far. But nothing complicated has happened yet. A little bit of cutting, a little bit of gluing, a little bit of sanding. Nothing too exciting. Ah, and this. I have been forgetting and forgetting and forgetting this. I saw that string stretcher on Dave's channel and I thought, I gotta have me that tool. That 
tool needs to be in my hands right now, right this second. So I built one that day. <sighs> um, this is just a piece of that gorgeous wood. Look at how that finishes. That's just like that's just a little bit of that's just a little bit of oil finish and some paste wax and it just comes out beautifully. It's just gorgeous. Anyway, I shaped this to fit my hand, as you can clearly see. But this is the string stretcher. I made my own. You see what that is there? Okay? That's a string end. So I use that so the top of the string can roll on the top of that. And then I stick one on the bottom. Of that side, can you see that? And then that rolls on the bottom of the other string. So essentially, it just rolls along like this, and you can stretch your strings. It's awesome. I'll show it to you in another video when I'm actually using it. Um, or actually, maybe I'll go show it to you on the shocker. Check this thing out. All right, that's going to be a little hard to film with one hand, so just forgive me. But essentially, here's how it works. Oh, it's backwards. So you can see there. Grab the string from underneath, um, put it on the little roller, and then, and then you got it there. Or actually, I do have it backwards. I knew I had it backwards. That's because I'm trying to film this. So I'm trying to film this and do it with one hand. Okay, so you see how it's stretching the string just like that? And I have better control over this when I'm not trying to film it. But essentially, yeah, you can just stretch your string like that. Sorry for the camera work here, but you see what I'm trying to do here. But that's, that's the basic rocking motion back and forth. Move it up a bit, stretch, move it up a bit, stretch, and then move on to the next string. I mean, it's not as good as that purpose-built one. And I would have bought one. If they had one in a guitar shop, I would have bought one right away. Their one is way more slick than mine. But the reason I'm showing this is, is, a, is to, 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 to show you a few things, is to, to explain a couple things. A, I'm impatient. I saw that tool and I was like, yes, I need to have one of those. But I knew that I had to order one. And I hate having to order stuff. And that's why it's not that I don't want to buy this stuff. It's not that I don't want to buy Stumac tools. I'd love to walk into a store and buy everything Stumac has. But I can't. It's really annoying. It's annoying that you have to pay for shipping. It's annoying that you have to wait for it. And it's annoying that local guitar shops don't carry stuff like this. So what guys like me is they guys like me do is they build stuff, right? They make stuff that isn't maybe necessarily good as the store bought one, but it does the trick. And that's the point. Like this was what did I use? I used a little bit of wood and some coat hanger, like that that literally you don't have to make one you don't have to make a fancy one but shit just some coat hanger would do this just some bent up coat hanger bend one way bend one what this way and the other in the other direction that's it and then turn it into a V right so one loops up that way and one loops down this way that's all it is and then just play with your angles this one might be a little too long actually now that I I've been using it I might cut it down a little bit and reshape it but that's the thing like this didn't cost anything these little these little rubber or these little metal washers from the ends of your strings free coat hanger free bit of wood in my garage free and I have a perfectly usable tool anyway this video is probably gonna be so long but uh, yeah lots of projects coming up kids I'm gonna do I'm gonna try one of the see if I can see if I can give you one of these I've never done one of these or I'm holding the camera um, okay, let me look, try and look right at the camera. So, uh, I have a bunch of unfinished projects, as you can clearly see from this early part of this video. My kids are always running around today. They're sick. They've got colds. They're actually being quiet for me right now. Um, but uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to attack first. Uh, I really am quite excited about the SG trifecta, and I have some fret work to do on one of them. Um, and I have some interesting comparisons that I want to do. Uh, I also want to talk about, um, you know, whether you should buy new or used and what you're going to deal with uh, in either situation. And I happen to have uh, two of those Epiphones now. I have a used one and a brand new one. 
So I'd like to show what you're going to get home and what you have to do and how to deal with uh, both a new and used guitar. And I happen to be fortunate enough to have two of exactly the same guitar. Uh, so we'll be able to see some of the differences and I think that's going to be quite interesting. And then we're of course going to compare those to the more expensive big brother, the Gibson. Um, and I think I've got a pretty good series of videos coming out on the SG. Uh, um, so that's going to keep us quite busy for a while. But as you know and as I've been banging on about, it's hard to get these videos done and it's they're time consuming and uh, you know life gets in the way. So uh, hopefully I will be back with something concrete. I know I keep saying that, but I just wanted to give you a little peek at what's actually going on. Cheers, folks. <laughs>